Good morning. How is everyone today? Oh, it's good to see you all. Um, and it's good to have breath on our bodies, uh, to be able to come before the Lord uh, together. i um, glad to see everyone's face. Nice. Um, as I light the candle today, let's remember that it's not just us in this place, um, but the one who created us is also here. Uh, Jesus is also sitting beside you in your pew. Uh, so let's meditate on the very real and alive presence of God, because um, that's why we're here. Uh, let's meditate on that as I light the candle. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for our direct connection to you. We thank you for coming for us, God, for coming down and living your life here, Jesus, and dying for us and then being resurrected, God. Thank you that you still live. Lord, we pray that as we go about today, we would feel the alive presence of you in this place that we would carry your presence everywhere we go. Jesus, we come before you with, with our, whole, um, our whole week before us, uh, carrying the things from last week. Lord, we ask that you would help us include you in it. Lord, help us to live this life with you, um, not just every once in a while, but help every single moment of ours be a prayer to you. Help us to involve you in this life because it came from you, God, and you have plans for us, and you have direction for us, and you have love for us. So we thank you, Jesus, for being there for us, and, and thank you for this moment to be together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Join with me as we sing uh, In This Very Room on page 612 in your hymnal.
Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful reminder. It's a it's a new hymnal for me, hymn for me, but a beautiful reminder that that Jesus is in this room, that here we are with God. Um, Let's say the affirmation of faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now I want to offer um, a time for you to offer yourselves. Um, we have the boxes by the doors. If you'd like to drop off your tithe and offering, you can do that now or when you leave. Um, also, you're welcome to um, please introduce yourself to someone afterwards or just ask someone you know how their week has been. Because um, as I remind us every every week, when we offer ourselves to someone else with love and with caring and, and try to meet someone where they're at, it's a way of offering ourselves to God. Um, So let's pray over this offering, and then we'll sing the doxology. God, we thank you that you are our provider, our sustainer. Thank you, Lord, that even if we just sat in praise and adoration, you would still take care of our basic needs, that you provide for us like uh, the birds, like the lilies, Lord, we just thank you that you have watched over us, God. We pray that we would uh, uh, continue being a family that watches over each other, uh, continue expanding our family, and we just offer ourselves to you, God. Help us to be used by the Holy Spirit to spread your kingdom of love some way this week, God. Help us to somehow uh, get in contact with someone who who needs love, who can teach us something. Just use us this week, God. Thank you for this family, for this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him above, truth here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. For announcements, we have Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday. Um, I can't believe February is over. I can't believe it's already Ash Wednesday. Um, But here we are. We're doing it. Um, This Wednesday, we're going to combine uh, with uh, Emmanuel Lutheran and Prosper Till Baptist. We're going to do a drive-through. We're going to have two services for Ash Wednesday. So the one is going to be at noon. Uh, That'll be a drive-through at, if anyone knows, St. Matthew's in Woodland. Do we kind of have an idea of where St. Matthew's in the Woodland is? It's 160 Fairview. It's right up there. Perfect. 160 Fairview Road. It's at the corner of Fairview and Lukens. Um, so if you'd like uh, to go on your lunch break or come out in your car, it's, it's a drive-through. You'll get um, you'll get a minister to, to put a, a cross on, on your forehead, give you a little service there in your car. Uh, please come out to that, show support as the three churches try to do something together. Uh, so that's at 12 this Wednesday for Ashes. Um, and then later at 7 in the sanctuary right here, uh, we'll be doing a short service also. Um, we encourage people to do both. Uh, come to the 12 if you're able. Come to the 7 if you're able. Um, and uh, it'll be a nice time to enter into um, Ash Wednesday, enter into Lent, and get prepared for Easter. So that's this 12 at St. Matthew's in the Woodland and 7 in the Sanctuary. 
Also, this Saturday, we're going to have combined women's and men's breakfast. So please come out. Um, we'll probably be doing pancakes. It'll be a fun time for all of us to gather. Um, everyone, 8.30 in the morning, downstairs. So that's this Saturday at 8.30. It's going to be a good breakfast. It's going to be a good time with each other. Uh, so please try to come out. Uh, the speaker is going to be Reverend Dunn from the prison uh, in the in the Delaware County Prison. She's the chaplain, and she's going to give a testimony of her experience there, her years there, uh, the stories that she's collected, um, her testimony in prison ministry. So come for the pancakes, stay for the good testimony. Uh, it's this Saturday, 8.30, um, downstairs. Does anyone else have any uh, announcements? Yes? Just a quick update. Um, the weekend of the 12th and 13th is going to be busy, uh, <laughs> for me anyway. Uh, we have meet night on Sunday night, the 13th. And on Saturday, the 12th, from 10 to 2, probably around 2, we're going to get the RLL trailer all set up and ready and just clean up uh, the garage area. So, so that's the 12th from 10 to 2, and um, we'll see where we are with that. Uh, and then, of course, we have second Sunday. This month we're doing a paint night, and... Uh, we're still in discussion on what the subject matter is going to be, but it will be something. I'm trying to keep it fairly simple, uh, but there's a, we've, we're looking at a lot of options, Joyce and I. So uh, still haven't quite decided, but the Lord will put that in, in our hands. So, Amen. Uh, Amen. That's what we're looking for that weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Jim McKay is reminding us that in two weeks we have a, a busy and fun weekend. Um, so on... So on Sunday, in, in two weeks, we're going to have paint night, trying to figure out what we're going to be painting. If you have any ideas, um, tell, tell Jim McKay, um, any, any ideas of, of what to paint during uh, our paint night. Also on Saturday, it's going to be, there's another announcement too. So at 8 in the morning, if you are interested in, in starting to do prison ministry with me and actually going into the Delaware County Prison, we're going to have a training at the Delaware County Prison. So at 8 in the morning, there's that. I think it goes like from 8 to like 3. But if you're not interested in that, then there's a, uh, a chance to clean up the garage here at 10. So it's a big as a weekend in two weekends. So block your calendars off. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Good. Let's uh, shift now, exhale, and try to hear uh, from God through the, through the living word. Um, as it appears in Exodus 34, 29 to 35. The lady spake from Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to him. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came to near him, and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face, and he went in to speak with the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. So the favorite part of my, uh, of my day on Sundays is to hear from you what, what's going on. So for joys and concerns, what can we pray for with you? What can we celebrate with you? Yes, Bob.
Amen. So Bob is asking for a prayer to clear, to clear his mind. Amen. I will. I will pray for that. Anybody else? It can be a small thing, too. I will wait for a few minutes, so might as, might as, well, might as well talk. Anybody else? Bob's got another. Perfect. Amen. Bob's praying for all of us here to have a beautiful life. Amen. Thank you. Um, for the Spillman slash Buchanan family, uh, my cousin died just last week, so Saturday's. Okay, wow. She uh, had Alzheimer's, so stuff for her. Yeah, yeah. Spillman and Buchanan. Uh, D. D, who just, who just passed? Right. Hmm. So we're praying uh, that God hold D now, um, hold D's spirit. Um, praying also for the Spielman and Buchanan family that they find some type of comfort during this. Um, D is with, with the Lord, but it's, it's always hard to lose someone. Uh, but we'll be praying. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Amen. That we, that he uses who to soften Putin? Somebody. Somebody. <laughs> Amen. So uh, that's beautiful. Uh, Bill Shanahan is reminding us that God used Moses to soften Pharaoh's heart, Daniel to soften Nebuchadnezzar's heart. So we're praying for uh, the Lord to send someone, uh, send someone to soften Putin's heart. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. This is not just um, something that happened way back then. It, it is something that happened. The Bible. But it is also something that it's a blueprint for for what's happening now too. Uh, so we're asking for God to send someone, send someone to soften Putin's heart. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody have any celebration? Yeah, Bob. Yeah, can I pray for the people that can't help themselves? Yeah, definitely. That's a good thing to pray for. So, um, praying for people who can't help themselves. You know, in so many ways, physically or emotionally, you know, if if someone feels like they're just alone, they can't they can't they can't find help or they can't help themselves, we're praying for them. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Kelly had a birthday on Valentine's Day. I'm not sure she celebrated with this age. But I think <laughs> oh, amen, amen. <laughs> Kelly's birthday. All right. Wonderful. So a celebration uh, for another another birthday. Praise another year around the sun. Around the sun. Yep, another year. Praise God. That's that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Happy birthday. Anybody else? You know. Amen. Praise God. So Gina has had better energy and better health. So, amen. Anybody else? Starting to like, starting to roll like popcorn, popping. Well, we have a praise. We have a new grandbaby born February 16th. Oh, okay. Julie Ed. Wow. And she was born three weeks early. Wow. And she's doing wonderful, though. It's really a blessing because our daughter in law had COVID at the end of January when she was still pregnant. And she went in for an inversion of the turn of the baby. And, um, and then they, she ended up having the baby, which was a blessing because. The placenta had been um, a little bit damaged from the, um, the uh, COVID. So praise God that our little Juliet is six now, three up. Wow. So wow. thank you. That's a big praise. Amen. Wow. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, congratulations. Nice. So little baby Juliet is safe and sound in this world. Wonderful. Praise God. And you'll get the last word, Bob. Amen. So a prayer for all the people um, that Bob loves and everyone that loves Bob. Amen. And I'll, and I'll tack on to that too, all the people I love and all the people who love me. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you've given us a church family that uh, we feel comfortable 
you know, talking about what we need from you. I thank you that you've given us a family that we can just share what's going on in our life and know that people around us want to hear it, want, want to be praying with us. Uh, Lord, we lift these things up together, God. Uh, we are not alone in this world. You've given us a church, a, a church family to do this with. Um, so we just lift this up. Uh, Lord, we thank you, God, for um, Bob and for his heart to pray. We pray for uh, you to clear his mind, Lord. Um, in Jesus' name, uh, just, just give us all clear minds, God, peace of mind. Um, Lord, we pray for, um, Lord, the uh, Spielman and Buchanan family, Lord, during their time of grief, Lord, we pray for comfort. Um, Lord, it's, it's painful. It's, it's heart-wrenching to lose someone. Um, but we know that you um, are still in control, that we are still in your hand. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the spirit. Uh, we pray that you would hold thee now um, in an embrace, God. Um, we, and we just ask that the family would, would have peace of mind, Jesus, in this difficult time. Uh, Lord, we, we celebrate with you the birth of Juliet. Uh, we thank you. We know that the angels rejoice when, when a new person comes, uh, when someone else is born. And, and we just thank you for Juliet, um, that she had a safe and healthy birth, God. Um, Lord, we pray for um, the people uh, that love Bob. We thank you for them and the people that Bob loves. Pray also for the people that love us, God, each one of us in our pews. Um, we are loved um, by somebody. And thank you especially that you love us um, a, a thousand times, a million times, more than we can understand. And we pray for those who, who we love, too, that would be with uh, that you would be with, um, especially for those who can't take care of themselves, God. We pray that you would um, send someone in their life to take care of them, that you would take care of them yourself, God. Um, Lord, we pray for um, just a celebration for Kelly's birthday, God. Thank you for another trip around the sun. Thank you that we are all here uh, to celebrate that. Lord, we thank you. Celebration for Gina's energy and health, um, Lord. Um, we also pray that you would um, just send someone, God, to soften the heart of Putin, God, and everyone involved in, in this war right now. Um, we pray that it would de-escalate, that it would not turn into um, something bigger. Uh, we pray that, uh, we pray for peace, Lord. Uh, Jesus, we pray that uh, no more lives would be lost uh, in pursuit of power or land. Uh, we pray that your kingdom of, of peace would reign and that you would soften the hearts of those who are trying to make war and, and trying to make uh, military maneuvers. Jesus, help us to, to be modeled after you, Jesus. Soften our hearts and, and teach us the way of peace. Please, Lord, um, be with every um, uh, immigrant and people fleeing their country now. Um, during this difficult time, pray that they would find a place to stay, um, pray that they would find a home, find a room in the inn, uh, Lord, that they would uh, be welcomed. Get us through this time, Lord, uh, with hope, God, with, with assurance that you are still in control, that you uh, still reign. And for everything that I missed and everything that uh, we kind of kept to ourselves, we give that to you too because you hear it whether or not we say it. Lord, you know our hearts, and we trust you with our hearts. Uh, so, Jesus, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Amen. 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 All right, so let's turn now to our second hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Uh, it's found in the hymnal on page 431.
Send forth your word, Lord. Um, let's listen to it as it comes forth in Luke 9, 28, 42. A man in the crowd called out, Teacher, 
I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. A spirit seizes him, and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. It scarcely ever leaves him, and it is destroying him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. Even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the evil spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. As I was writing this sermon this week, I had the sun shining right in my face. I think it was Wednesday. I don't know if you remember it, but it was a sunny day. I felt the warmth hitting my skin and started to close my eyes and just rest in it. When I went inside for some water, the inside of my house was cool, but I touched my face and I still felt the warmth of the sun on my skin. When Zoramiah was just a few days old, the doctor told me I had to hold her in the sunlight each day so that the sunlight could hit her and break up the rubabellum and jaundice that was making her tired. I felt like my daughter was a little plant who needed direct sunlight, and as I sat rocking her in the sun day by day, she got more and more alert and active. Being in God's direct presence in the Holy of Holies, being with the Lord, is like being in direct sunlight. Spending time in God's holiness and nearness will change us. It will give us the vitamin D and spiritual vitamins that we need. And it will transform our faces, our countenance. Being in the presence of God will, create, will cause us to be alert and do new things in this world. It will change us when we get into the presence of God. When you open up to face Jesus, you are facing the eternal Son. When you face him, expect God's presence to change you, and then go live that change out. In today's scripture, we have in Exodus 34, Moses getting into God's presence, and it caused his face to shine. Can you picture it? I think I, I used to as, as a child. Um, his face shined so bright that he had to put a veil over his face. Exodus 34:29 tells us the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. This reminds us that any time we find ourselves talking with God, whether it's in prayer or church, whether we find God's presence in the face of someone who is going through difficulty and pain and keeping their faith through it, any time we find ourselves talking with God, we should expect it to physically and spiritually change us. We find ourselves talking with God. We don't, we don't always have to climb a mountain to do it. We can just find ourselves really pleading with God, talking with God. Do we imagine ourselves completely changed afterwards? Do we imagine ourselves glowing with God's radiance? Our faces are shining afterwards, whether we see it or not. I'm hoping that after this sermon we will, we will see it and, and we'll feel it. Our spirits um, are shining afterwards, and we should go about the day in a different way after we've talked with the Lord. Uh, we have just felt God when we speak with God, the Holy of Holies near us, and so the question becomes, what will we do now? After you encounter God in your day-to-day, -day, what do you do next? Even in this sermon and in this moment, the Holy Spirit the living word is here, speaking to you. Sure, I'm speaking to you, but if you listen underneath it, God is trying to say something to you. Sisters and brothers, we are right now in the midst of the Most High God. What an honor to be in the midst of God. How are you going to be changed in the next few minutes by these scriptures? and what you hear God speaking through the sermon. 
How will you be changed by God's bright presence? In Luke, Jesus is changed from head to toe because Jesus is the very presence of God, as we know. Here on earth with a body like ours, Jesus is God's presence all around us. Jesus is here, resurrected and alive in person, so that you you and I can understand and learn about God's love. It says in Luke 9, 28, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Can you see? Peter saw Jesus shining and saw Moses and Elijah appear and he wanted to build three huts on the mountain. Peter was missing the point, as we kind of know now. The point is that Jesus is the presence of God. Jesus is God here with us. That God is here and close is what the point was. And and God made it a little clearer for Peter. Uh, It covered them all up in a cloud. God uh, surrounded them in a deep, thick cloud. Luke 9.34 says, A cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. I'm sure I would be terrified as well. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. Their faces were soaking in the dazzling glory of Jesus, the chosen one, God with us. They were covered by a cloud, And they even heard the very voice of God reminding them that Jesus is the all in all. And we are reminded too today, Jesus is here for you and me so that we might walk with God in this life. Not just so we have something to believe on Sunday, so that we might actually walk with God each step, our next day and our next. We might have the light of God's presence, that that shining light, within us as well. Jesus lives in and around us so that we can walk and work alongside God. And when God spoke to them on the mountain, the Bible tells us they were silent. They had, they had nothing to say. I think it took them a while to get over the shock and change that had just happened in their own lives. They had just come in direct contact with God and it changed them. And it 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 kept their mouth shut, too. You are also coming in contact with God today. Whether you realize it or not, you are coming in contact with God. How will it change you? It's a a powerful thing when when we realize that our faith brings us in contact with God. How will hearing God's voice in this service change you today? Will it put you in awe and silence? We have a hard time making small talk on the car ride at home. What will God, uh, what will seeing God's brightness do to you? Will it turn your face to Jesus and to the work of Jesus of visiting prisoners, caring for poor people and hungry people? If you turn your face to Jesus and the least of these, How will that change your face? How will that change whose faces you look into on a day-to-day? How will it change how you look at those in need? Will you see yourself in need? Will you see yourself filled with light? Will you see Jesus when you look around in the faces of the poor and prisoner and sick around you, in the faces of your loved ones and your neighbors? Before we face Jesus and surrender everything, we need to count the cost. Following Jesus will do something to us. It will cost us our status quo and normal day-to-day. It will change us for the better. It will fill us for a love for those who are in trouble and those who can't help themselves, for people um, who people who other people think twice about hanging out with. It will change how we see the whole world. It will keep us glowing, but it will also keep us taking risks as we follow a God 
who loves everyone. God reminds us in Isaiah 42, 9, See, the former things have come to pass, and a new thing I now declare. A new thing I now declare. God is a living God, and God is living in our midst. God is a creator, and God is creating a new thing in our midst. And I know, as humans, we're more comfortable with the way things have been for a while. But getting into the presence of God will mean getting into the presence of the creator, of the creative, of the new. Are we ready for the creative and the new? Are we ready to forget the way that we have done things and turn our face to God and see what new thing God will bring through us? Are we ready to change our worship? Are we ready to change our weekly schedules? Are we ready to go make friends with homeless people, hungry people, people in prison? Are we ready to go to paint night and and speak to our neighbors uh, on our side? This is what Jesus did when he walked with us, and this is what Jesus does now as he lives inside us. He brings us to each other. Do we want to be in the presence of God if it means that we will be changed? that we will be made new. Carrying the presence of God will be like spending time in the sun and then carrying its warmth on your face the rest of the day. I know we've all gone to the beach at some point. You kind of carry the sun on your face um, for a while after that. You won't be able to hide after you've been in the presence of God. You won't be able to hide the fact that the presence of God is within you and on you. Do you want this joy and responsibility of carrying God's presence throughout the world? It will mean that our paths will cross with people who need help, and it will mean that our paths will cross with the powers of this world that keep people in pain. And it will be up to you and me as children of the living God to say, Jesus is here. Jesus is alive. You and I are set free in Jesus' name. Can you feel God's nearness and God's presence? In closing, we're reminded today of the joy of being in God's presence. We're reminded also of how God's presence will change us and what it will cost if we carry it throughout the world. Before we go in front of God so our face might shine with God's love, let's consider our homework. I'd like to give an assignment, and the assignment for this week is to get into God's presence on a daily basis. Continue last week's practice of praying over things in your life. I got um, a little carried away with my prayer list. I, I kept on writing and writing and writing and eventually have to say, you know, etc. But let's continue to make prayer lists and pray over the things that we want God to handle. Um, and also, let's just sit and be with God. Instead of always writing or staying busy, let's try to get into the presence of God. Let's sit out in the sun uh, if it gets warm feel God around us. Uh, our, our, our weak assignment is just to be dwelling and, and sitting in the presence of God at some point. Once we've spent time in our personal life in God's presence, let's get out and meet God in the world. We need to heed the words of Jesus who asked us why we didn't come visit him when he was in prison, or why we didn't feed him when he was hungry, or why we didn't clothe him while he was naked. If we are here on this earth desiring to carry God's presence, if we want to be near God and watch God change things around us, we have to spend time with people in need. We have to realize we're also in need. That's all I've got. But I want us today to come in direct contact with God. So I want us to pray a bit together uh, in a new way because I want us to step into the sun and feel God's presence shining on us today. I want us to feel God changing our hearts and minds. I want us to feel God warming our bodies, even giving us vitamins and spiritual resources that we need. So many of us need some some of God's spiritual vitamins in our life. Uh, And so I want us to um, enter into a a few minutes of prayer. Uh, I'd like to ask everyone that's physically able um, to find some ways to get on your knees. If if you're not able to, that's okay. Uh, Bow your head and and get on your knees in your heart. Um, If you'd like to come up to the altar and and get on your knees, that would be great. If you want to get on your knees in your pew, uh, or again, I know sometimes the knees can be tricky things, so uh, bow your head and and get on your knees. And let's pray. Let's let's get close to God this morning. 
so for all of you who'd like to come up to the altar, you can come now. Um, as we take a few minutes now uh, to feel Jesus radiating God to us, to get into God's presence, uh, let's, let's be like Moses uh, who came to the mountain of the Lord. Uh, let's be like Jesus who came to pray and found that God was so close. Uh, let's be uh, willing to be changed. Uh, let's come before our God and expect to meet God in a new way. Um, so if you could uh, play a little bit, uh, Sharon, we'll begin to pray. Are you ready to get into the presence of God? Let's come together. Lord Jesus, you know what we need, God. We don't even know really why we're here, um, God, why we're on our knees, what you have for us. God, but you have something for us today. Jesus, help us to feel your presence. Send your Holy Spirit. Help us to be changed, Lord. We don't want to just have another um, Sunday service. We want to encounter you, God. Open our hearts, God. Still our minds. Jesus, speak to us now. Lord, we want to offer up what's on our hearts, God. Um, help us to recall in our minds the things that we need to bring to you. Jesus. As we take just one more minute, Lord, um, just help us to sit and rest in your presence. I want to do one last thing uh, before we close. Turn to someone next to you and ask them uh, what you can pray for for them. Um, ask them quickly um, just one thing they want prayer for and, and then pray for them. Um, we'll just take one or two minutes just to pray for the person next to you uh, and then tell them what, what they can pray for you for. Let's do that quickly. And I want to hear some chatter as we, as we pray. What can I pray for you for? Um, I think for a bit of, um, yeah, I think, um, for my younger sister, my 13-year-old sister, um, just kind of gone through a little depression and, um, pray for her, uh, uh, Tatiana, and for me just to have energy through this week. How about for you? Yeah, I just, uh, to have him still come into me more yeah. and to make these things happen that are, are being coming forth and, and praying on and, and coming to me in the stillness and, and uh, to build Joyce and I mm -hmm. to the last can we start? Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for Pastor, thank you for his presence here please help Tatiana to come to know you and have peace in her himself and to be still enough to know that you are Lord that's the hardest part for us Yes, Lord. And Lord, pray that you would continue to um, 
come into Jim's heart, Lord, and Holy Spirit, uh, fill him, Lord, with your your presence, your love, your peace, um, your power, God. Pray also that you would build, continue to build him and Joyce, Lord. Uh, thank you for the foundation they have in you, and help them just to continue to be built, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I want to invite you to continue to pray if you'd like. Uh, for those of us uh, who are ready, uh, the next song will be Spirit of the Living God, 389. But you can continue to pray as well. Now go in peace. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have made us as vessels, God. Vessels where you can pour your Holy Spirit into. So Lord, help us to receive what you have for us this week, God. Help us to carry you and your love everywhere we go. Help it to renew and refresh us and those around us. We love you, Lord. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. How are you feeling? Good. Thank you. Yeah.
I'm still in my car. <laughs>